So you're a kinesiology major trying to get a job after you graduate and you have a couple more years before you have to decide what is the career path for me? Now kinesiology major, exercise science major, they're like the same thing. So just don't get so caught up in kinesiology versus exercise science. But we just know that overall the major kinesiology major focuses on the study of human movement and its relationship to physical health. So what job opportunities are out there for kinesiology majors? Top five careers, in my opinion, on what a kinesiology major can get into, especially considering education and salary. So watch this video all the way to the end so you can learn all five of those careers and so that maybe you can get inspired to say, hey, I was actually looking into this job or maybe I didn't even know that this job was a part of what kinesiology could get into and maybe you can just get that jump start as to which career field you should get into in the future. All right, let's get into this video. Lego. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Dr. Lift for Change, physical therapist, or you can call me Justin Lee. Here on this channel, you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy, and lifestyle that helps inspire self-change. Change people, change people. That's why we live for change, people. If any of this resonates with you, feel free to subscribe and hit those notifications so you don't miss a video when it drops. Okay, so let's get into this. We're gonna talk about the top five careers that you can potentially get into with a kinesiology or an exercise science major. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about each of those, talking about the education requirements and the salary. So as you guys know, I love having things organized. So that's kind of the format of how we're going to go about this video. By the way, if you guys like for if you guys like the organization and formats of my videos, please don't forget to give this video a like. All right, number one on the list. This is my number one favorite for this major, and it's going to be a certified personal trainer or a fitness coach or a group fitness coach. Now, for this job, you do not need a bachelor's in anything to start working. You actually only need a certification and I believe a high school graduation degree or whatnot. So technically, if you're an exercise science or kinesiology major right now, maybe you should drop out if you wanna be a personal trainer full time. Nah, don't drop out. You guys are already on this road, so you might as well finish up. But having that kinesiology major is going to help you significantly and help you stand out amongst the people who just got a certification versus you who got that bachelor's degree in human movement or kinesiology. Now for personal trainers, the salary, now this can be a wide range, right? Because you have personal training, group fitness, all that kind of stuff in the corporate or you're working for someone else for eh, subpar pay or you can always, 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 especially in this career, you can go private and get some really good pay. And this is what I recommend here. And we're gonna talk a little bit about both. Now, I love being a personal trainer or a group fitness instructor because you have so much freedom and flexibility literally to do anything you want in life and still make some substantial income especially if you're a student or you're trying to hustle with something else and have maybe this as a source of income or a side hustle this is the way to go i'm telling you and if you have any questions throughout when i'm talking about this particular career let me know because i'm super passionate about being a personal trainer or a group fitness coach and all that um, just just for some background, I've been a personal trainer for over eight years. I've been into group fitness instructing for several years now. Uh, I started at Orange Theory Fitness. I did my own private classes and all that stuff. And I love every moment of it. So I have a lot of things that I wish I could share, but if you guys are interested, just let me know. Okay, so when you're working in the corporate world or for a private company and you are working for someone else, uh, you're gonna make an average of $40,000 for this, okay? Now, $40,000, that equates to about maybe like, I don't know, $18 to $20 an hour, and you're working full-time, right? Now, if you're in the private world, you can charge easily, easily $50 an hour. 
So you literally can work half the amount of time and make still make the same amount of money if you go private. Okay, next on the list, we're gonna go to number two, which is a sports strength and conditioning coach. Now, the labor of Buru Labor Statistics says that a coach, a coach, a sports coach, makes only about $34,000 a year, and you need a bachelor's degree for that. Now, this is just a general average kind of salary for maybe someone in high school, you're a high school coach for like a football team and whatnot. Yeah, that's not that much money, right? We can both agree on that. But you can definitely work your way up to the pros and to the, like, the highest level because I did some research. You know, you know how much money these high elite strength and conditioning coaches make? Oh, you will be surprised. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I did some research and I found that the top, most top paid strength and conditioning coach in 2020 as of march 2020 is mickey maroti maroti i think that's how you say his name anyway he's the head strength and conditioning coach for the uh, for ohio state's football team and you know he makes he makes listen up eight hundred and one thousand dollars a year bruh $801,000 a year, are you kidding me, to be a strength and conditioning coach? Yeah, that's a lot of money. So if you guys are ambitious and you're trying to strive for that elite level, that pro level, and be a strength and conditioning coach, you gotta have at least, at least the bachelors, but I guarantee you, in order to be even qualified, you gotta have at least a master's or a doctorate or a PhD or something like that. Okay, moving on to career number three as an exercise physiologist. Now, an exercise physiologist, for those of you who don't know, is someone who is interested or studying physiology and the effects of exercise and how that affects our physiology or our body's response, right? So, for example, like those of you who know, when we run, our heart rate goes up, right? So that's the that's what we study. We know the physiology of exercise and how our heart rate, our blood pressure goes up, how things kind of try to level out and balance to maintain homeostasis, you know, things kind of like in that nature. Now, exercise physiologists can work in universities, they can work in, in private clinics, they can work in different uh, locations where they're helping prevent diseases or helping people move on to that next level, right, type of thing. So when you see those videos of those people wearing those masks and running on the treadmill like a lab rat, those are like what exercise physiologists would do for maybe some re people into research. Now, exercise physiologists only need a bachelor's degree and you can always move higher up with a higher education like a master's or a PhD or a doctorate degree in this. But when they start out, they make close to about $49,000 a year. So it's, it's decent, but you get to do what you love to do and it's pretty cool because you get to literally, literally put people on machines and test them out and get all this information and use science to say this is the best way to get you to your goals. This is what we need to do to prevent your, prevent any types of diseases or anything like that. So exercise physiology, I think is super dope. That was something that I was really considering besides physical therapy to get into. And I think it's an awesome career field if you're interested in exercise and its relationship to the human body. All right, moving on to number four on the list. Obviously, you guys know what this channel is all about. It's physical therapy. So that's what we're going to get into. Physical therapy and occupational therapy, actually. So two rehab fields, right? Two fields that require good, good substantial knowledge in the human body and human movement and how we can rehabilitate the human movement to achieve certain goals like walking better, sitting and standing better, or dressing better, or utilizing our hands to brush our teeth. Like all those things require human movement, right? So kinesiology majors have a really good chance at furthering their education into that doctorate level degree. So physical therapy and occupational therapy both require a doctorate degree. Now occupational therapy right now is just a master's, 
but in the near future, they're transitioning over to doctorate programs, which is why you see now a doctorate in OT versus masters in OT a lot more frequently. So a physical therapist, the average salary is about $89,000 a year, and occupational therapists are about $84,000 a year. So they're relatively pretty close right now, and this, this $84,000 is at a master's level for occupational therapy. So when they get into that doctorate level, you will likely see a raise in salary. Now I have no idea what that's gonna look like, but physical therapy, occupational therapy, both have very, very high percentage rates of growth in the near future. So if you're a kinesiology major right now and you're thinking about going into PT or OT, now is a fantastic time to get into that. Now for a little shameless plug for myself, if you're trying to get into physical therapy school and you have no idea how to get there and you want to know how to get there the fastest, most efficient, and learn the tips and tricks and strategies to maximize your time as a student, I do have an online course available for that for only $29. And this course will teach you everything you need to know to get into Doctorate of Physical Therapy School and to be successful in the application process. I remember when I was in there, it was a, it was like, I had no idea what's going on. So you can find all the information in the description below. It's through the Think Thinkific website. So make sure you check that out. And um, if you purchase that and you have any questions, make sure you email me so I can uh, definitely answer your questions for you. Okay, so the last one on the list, number five, is a chiropractor. Now for those of you who don't know, chiropractors is a healthcare professional that requires four years of school after a bachelor's. So you need four years to become a doctor of chiropractic to get your doctorate degree in chiropractic, chiropractor, whatever. And your average salary starting out is gonna be $70,000. Now, I have nothing against chiropractors. I think they're phenomenal at knowing the human body. I think they're really great with knowing how to utilize their hands and to feel what's out of place and to align things, especially the spine with our human, with, uh, with just posture, right? But they're also great at utilizing just your posture, not only in the spine, but also in your neck, your shoulders, your elbows, your hips, your knees, all that type of stuff. So if you're interested in that, they're great. I mean, how many times have you been to a chiropractor and you got a little adjustment and you're like, wow, I feel amazing. Okay, y'all, so that was the top five careers that you can get into as a kinesiology major or an exercise science major. Now, you're in school right now and you're trying to determine where should I go? I totally understand that. And this is why I made this video for you so that you can have some legitimate career paths to think about. Now there's a lot, there's a lot more careers that you can get into with a kinesiology major like education or more into different healthcare fields. But these were the top five that I thought were the most interesting and the ones that actually I considered the most when I was a kinesiology major myself. So I want to hear from you. Which one were you interested in out of the top five that we talked about? Drop it in the comments. Let's have some discussion. Let's freaking talk about it. Right? And if you have liked this video, I really appreciate it if you give this a like. And if you have any friends who are also in the kinesiology major or exercise major field as well, please share this video with them so that they can also gain some insight as well. So I hope this video helped inspire some self change to get into these top five career paths that I mentioned, or maybe it swayed you away to say, maybe I should actually change my major because I'm not interested in this, these fields at all. And I don't know why the heck I chose kinesiology in the first place. <laughs> if this is you, you should get out now. Nah, I'm just kidding. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I do have a lot more relevant videos, especially in the field for physical therapy. Uh, I have a huge playlist on that. So make sure you watch all of them to gain some insight and some education so you can grow as well. Stay lifting, stay aloha. Have a great one, you guys.